Hi, hello everyone. This is Abu Tahir, an intern from Key Cyber. I am here to take a webinar on OSINT and its verification part. I am sure this webinar will be an interesting journey of learning something new and getting you started in the field of OSINT. This webinar is targeted on general audience. It's not something like a high level content or something that will go you bounce off. So let's get started. OSINT image and video verification. The topics to be covered in this webinar are what is OSINT, what is mean by OSINT, how do you do image video analysis and verify its truth using reverse image search, geolocation, metadata and etc. Before getting into the presentation I would like to play a video which is pretty interesting. Tegen Antwerpen. Ja. Insecten. Dat blief. Ik voel twee insecten op je, op je rug. Kan dat? Ja, vlinders. Slovenië, Slovenië. Zo hè. Eén moto, oranje. Pas erop. Zenit. Oui, oui, bien. Je hebt een vriendin, uh, Julie de b***. <laughs> ja. Een boeiend liefdesleven. <laughs> Drie, vier zelfs. De vierde, daar zwaai ik meestal over, dus dat weten niet veel mensen. Hoe is mijn spierscheur? Maison rouge, balcon, plan. Ja. Ik zie geld, ik zie uh, transacties. Maar ik kent je rekeningnummer van buiten? Ik denk dat ik het wel weet. Je staat wel negatief op je bankrekening. Ja? 9, 7. Last month, mm -hmm. you spent 200 euro's on alcohol. Vorige maand... 300 euro aan kleding gespendeerd. 8, 5, ja. voor een huis dat van eigenaar gaat veranderen. 195.000 euro. Ja, maar eigenlijk. 41. Ja. Is dat juist? Ja, dat is juist. Oh my god. Oh nee. Ah, dat vind je eng. Oké. Okay. Let's discuss what happened in the video. As we see in the video, an individual who claims to be a prophet or he says like I can predict future tells everything about them. Their name, address, their friend's name, etc. Like, before they got into the premises, the audience, they would have just got the basic informations, like uh, name of the audience, the address and some sort of profiles. They collected it and gave it to the background team. Meanwhile, this person had a connectivity with the team. Just like initially, he was saying the name, address, a friend's uh, uh, name, the tattoos. It was very fine. But the second half was scary. He was able to say that their interest in selling their house, their, uh, uh, the last four digits of their credit card number, their previous expenditure on clothes and uh, alcohols, and so on. So all these things, whether can you say it's possible? Someone can say yes, some can say no, or maybe, but this really happens. The final frame you see all the people sitting with the mask and some stuffs and typically some kind or typically some kind of ex exaggeration. Not all hackers keep on sitting on dark screens and do things. Hackers are people, they are just your relatives, your friends or uh, your neighbors. And this video is not about hacking. It's a part of hacking. That is the information gathering part. They have collected the information of the audiences which are publicly available. Which are publicly available over internet. 
this is known as open source intelligence the team revealed the individual's sensitive information in a fraction of 15 to 20 minutes then imagine what's happening on internet how much of our information is publicly available for how many days and years okay let's come to the point what is open source intelligence it is nothing but the collection and analysis of the information gathered from publicly available sources whatever information that is freely available no matter where you live whichever information that is publicly available for everyone to access is called to be open source collecting this open source information and analyzing it is called to be a ocent okay let's get into its evolution ocent is not new in 1941 during world war 2 the fbms created a, a created a team to analyze the collection of open radio signals and public materials to monitor the radio propaganda uh, beamed to us like beamed at us in 2005 after the rise of internet social media the cia launches the open source center which gathers the general public informations on 2009 when the social media usage at all time high and iot takes off ocean sources of iot devices iot devices leading to new sources of ocean for anyone who knows where to look by 2016 ocean being applied to multitude of use cases ocean it's been widely used by business by political campaigns for political campaigns investigators investors and security teams you then the next slide is what are publicly available information everything you put online is considered as publicly available information example the social medias where you feed your contents every day every time every minute the newspaper articles other web contents file sharing sites courses and etc you can ask then where is the so called name privacy in social medias and over internet that ocean breaks the rule of privacy the answer is no ocean is about examining information that's public and it should not involve invasion of privacy a legitimate researcher or an investigator knows the line be drawn between the ocent and espionage that is the gaining information that has not proactively made public who uses ocent the answer is everybody uses ocent in, the, in their day to day life but ocent is even simpler you know many of us associate ocent to cyber warfare cyber attacks cyber security and etc and while those things are a part of it ocent is much more ex- explicit and uncomplicated it is like asking questions on any search engine reasoning public forums on how to fix your computer watching a youtube video on how to make a birthday cakes as you see you don't need to be a hacker to use ocent in your daily life daily life you are already using it you just might not know it types of ocent there are three types active passive and semi passive active is nothing but the way of collecting informations by directly interacting with the target either through a phone call either through emails or something but there is a direct interaction with the target to collect the information the passive does not have any interaction does not involve any interaction with the target they collect informations over third party websites their blogs their profiles by following them their footprints over internet and so on then what is semi passive it is like an interactive jack it's like what everyone do to know their crush or loved ones likes and dislikes we will be contacting our crush friend and trying to maintain a good communication with her to know our crush likes and dislikes and surprising our crush with the information we have collected after analyzing the likes and dislikes 
since we are not completely collecting the information without an interaction with someone so it's named as semi passive it, it includes in some interaction but without direct interaction so the name derives as semi passive it's the osint process the first step of osint is identifying the source where you can find the information in which platform in which area the second is the harvesting it's time to get the relevant data from the identified sources collecting as much as information from the sources the third is data processing processing the acquired data to get a meaningful information from the harvesting the next is analyze analysis joining the data acquired from multiple sources and analyzing it the final step is reporting creating the final report with whatever information we have collected after analyzing it this is the osint process okay it's been quite uh it's been quite uh, theoretical let's go into practical do you do you know what is mean by data breach data breach is nothing but uh, a leak of data by organization over organization or in organization by hackers or technological faults whenever a data breach happens the first step should we should do is we must check our credentials were leaked in the data in the data breach just go to breachchecker.com and type your email let's see you know many data breaches our email has been breached see there were two breaches in animoto.com and dubsmash.com over 2019 september and 2019 february let's use another email okay let's use another website have i been pawned this is also an amazing website let's use another email see there has been a breach dominos india one data breach over dominos the next is whenever you get uh, urls the most urls are forwarded by using url shortness unless you are touching it you may be not known what is a site how many redirections it is a uh, harm or not okay there is a website called check short url like i have some urls like it is analyzing see without going into the website without clicking the link we can see the web page it seems uh, it is like a scam which offers 50 gb free data for one month and it's been redirecting okay there is an another website for checking urls to, to check a uh, where goes dot com it shows how many times a url is redirecting and to which site it has been redirecting let's see we use the same url see it's been directing twice it's there are uh, two redirections and the final site is www.freeinternetoffer.xyz 
it's not legitimate but it's been hidden over bitly i have another bitly short now where which is right let's test it how many time it redirects okay it's been re redirecting single time to amazon jp.com okay i think it's been a phishing email to check the uh, integrity of our links we can use virus total virus total is a website which is used to check uh, uh, scan files and urls before downloading for any malware things let's see copy pasting the link it gets analyzed okay no security well flat okay then it's fine uh, okay try this one see a vendor called uh, commodo welcome new deck flag data as a malware so a security vendor flagged this url as malicious so there has been a malicious thing over this url to get rid of uh, your website from phishing websites you can also see how many uh, like uh, dns uh, there is a website called dns twister Sorry, it's not DNS Twister dot com. It's DNS Twister. It's an anti phishing domain name search engine in which uh, if you enter your name like Facebook dot com, it shows existing domains with the same name but with a different format. These formats are used. These domain names are used for phishing usually. See, Facebook, Facebook. Here is three double uh, three double uh, triple uh, triple O's. See the F has been changed here. The IP has been changed. IP is different. Okay. Usually people's mind people are uh, contain a hu human buffer overflow. They see the start and the end. They won't see the middle words, middle letters. If someone send a link with a uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook dot com or a Facebook dot com or Facebook dot com, they won't see their heads. They only see a facey face and last uh, okay book. Okay. In OSINT, we collect information and analyze it. It can be an image or a video or it can be anything which needs to be verified completely. The verification part of an OSINT plays a major role and here we are going to see how to verify images and videos and a case study to reduce fake messages transmitted via images and videos. Then why verification? The ability for anyone to upload content and to label or describe it as being from a certain event leaves many journalists, investigators terrified about being hoaxed or running with false content. Some people go out of there to del deliberately hoax news organizations and the public by creating fake websites, fake accounts, photoshopping images and editing videos. And there is also one thing. People trying to be helpful often find misla mislabeled content from previous news events and share it during emergency situations. Okay, here is a Twitter image of a man apologizing for tweeting a photo emailed to him by his wife. She told him that it showed a typhoon called Usagi as it is headed towards Hong Kong. In fact, it was an old image of an another event. So he made an apology to the public. Verification checks. Verification is a skill made possible through some free online tools and some techniques. No technology can automatically verify a piece of user generated content with 100% of accuracy. When an investigator or a researcher finds a piece of information or content via social media, 
there are four elements to check and confirm via social media or anything there are mainly four elements to check first one is provenance confirming the authenticity of the piece of content that is asking a question whether the piece of content is a original one or not example in case of a tweet be aware there is there are sites to fake a tweet which makes easy to fake a tweet which can be shared as a picture another way people uh, spread false information on twitter is by pre- uh, present presenting the fake info as a retweet like retweeting the fake messages even fakers also add a blue tick verification check to prove its trueness because they are the owner the second one is source confirming the source this can be done by using metadata which is nothing but data about data by this we could see the type of camera used to record who uploaded the content the author the date of modification and everything the third part is confirming the date of the event it is the most difficult elements of verification for example if a video is uploaded in youtube we can see the time and date in which it was uploaded even in uh, uh, even social medias have the ability to show dates but in most videos there will be no dates there will be no occurrences we have to guess by weather condition of the day weather condition of the time the pick was taken the fourth one is location confirming the location asking the question where was the content created whether it is photoshopped or it is a real location only a small percent of content is automatically geolocated but we can geolocate the images and videos using google maps but it will be also more a difficult process and it takes quite time the next one is verifying let's jump into verifying images one powerful image can define a story and everyone knows it so it is a hard it is necessary to verify a image before forwarding or sharing there are five elements of a image which is a image intelligence that you should consider when looking at an image firstly look at the context the description of the image shared by the people or the image shared with uh, some words or anything next look for the foreground and background like the scenarios and the uh, cities and the buildings and the people and so on then the map markings uh, like uh, street uh, street boards and so on then guess by using trial and error method there are some questions you should ask yourself while looking at an image or a video the first question is are there any obvious data in the image that reveals the location like a street name or a store front signals second one is can you determine the country or a region of the image for instance which side of the road they drive on the language they use may also use uh, can be used to reveal a region you can also recognize road signs nature and environmental characters or popular motor vehicle brands and types and so on and make sure do you see any unique landmarks buildings bridges statues or mountains that can help us geolocate the image okay the techniques we are going to use here are reverse image search geolocating like geolocation metadata and some extensions the first tool okay before getting a int let us take a example let's do some practical let's take this example okay this is an image from this image we are going to find the street name okay the first tool we are going to use is google 
if you see anything in the image that can be extracted into a keyword phrase or a company name or any other question you may have a, as a result scanning the image up and down the only way is just google it when geolocating a picture finding the exact location key but we may need to answer other questions about the location or the image as well usually referred to as a context questions okay let's look at the image search for strings the keywords phrase whatever you found on let's see here there is a board welcome to karnabi street okay next there is a store makeup store on karnabi street next there on the left hand side there is a for nano shop and uh, it's like a marketplace like a fancy marketplace okay from this we came uh, we can conclude that it is the street name is karnabi we need to find the city and the location just google it karnabi street using the keywords we found from the images karnabi street london shopping dining dining in karnabi street let's look at this sorry this is a website i think so 14 scenes in the heart of karnabi street okay here is a board we saw the same board karnabi see here it's the same see here karnabi history okay the shops seem similar and so on so we came to know that it the street name is karnabi it is located in london and it is a shopping and dining uh, like it is a marketplace okay close to oxford street and regent street it is a home to fashion and lifestyle retailers okay it was a nice nice image just take up a next image the next one is this one just analyze the image it is like a, a restaurant people are <coughs> sitting and eating there and there is a board called why we are connects see here let's zoom in the twitter handles and facebook handles are invisible we can't find anything and there is a website called why we are dot ca okay here we need to find uh, in which building this restaurant is situated in which location okay let's google, google up the keyword yvr.ca yvr.ca let's see what is this okay Welcome to Vancouver International Airport. Okay, it is an airport. Yvo. dot ca is an airport. Okay, let's Google this. it is in canada and the website shows that dot ca dot ca indicates it is canada the domain name also plays a major role as a keyword or a string okay address grand mc mcconaughey way richmond bc 
Canada. So the restaurant might be in the same building. Okay, so there is no name. We, I think we can't find it further. Since the board is in it, in this place, it should be inside this building. Okay. Next, we are going to another technique. That is reverse image search. <coughs> One of the methods of for geolocating an image is to do an image reverse search. This means that we are searching for the image itself online and if the image has been indexed by search engines, we may find the exact image or we can do a virtual search or a crop search to help us to find the images. Here there are uh, three search engines, major search engines. First one is Yandex. It is a Russian search engine which yields more results on uh, reverse image search. Next one is Bing. It has a special feature called uh, visual search. It plays a major role. The third ranked is Google. It gives you a crop search. It gives you a normal search, Google reverse search. And there are some extensions. Some of the extensions are here. See here. Re Revi, reverse image search. Okay. So let's take up our image. Okay. Uh, we are going to take this. Here. In this image, if you see it, there is no keywords. See, I am in zooming in. There is no footprints. There is no keywords. There is no anything. But we can guess that it is a eating place. Everyone, uh, it is a ga it is a rush place. There is so much crowd. So let's geolocate it. First, we go to Yandex. Okay, one minute. Yandex dot com. As I said, it is a Rus Russian search engine which yields more results. Okay. Let's upload the image. Here is the option available. Okay. Translate to English. Select a file. And ours is task six. Okay. See, there are so many images, and there are similar images. See here. Just look at this. Okay. Have a look at this. It looks more or less similar. The same image has been in the hundred percent similar. The same image image has been in overnight. Outside cards, picture of cards, Delhi. Okay, New York City. Cards, Delhi. Okay. Let's browse it. Cards, Delhi. Okay. Situated in New York, USA. Cards, Delhi. Okay. Let's let's see. Some more images. see here the same place the same lights the same backgrounds so this is cards daily yeah yandex heals results okay the next one is okay the third technique we are going to say is metadata xf2 
how do I find out where an image was taken and how can I prove and how can I verify it that I know where it was taken it's a complex topic but how we are going to look at the simplest and the easiest uh, ways of verifying where an image was taken and that's by looking at what we can see we accept data in the image now when a photograph is taken with a digital camera or with a mobile phone a lot of extra data that we call as metadata is embedded in the image so it will contain information about when the phone when the photo was taken the camera settings and uh, things like that it even contain the latitude and longitudes however as you may be aware most websites social medias and messaging platforms that you might have want to find a photo that you are researching and those places tend to remove except data from images so although finding except data and gps coordinates is the easiest and fastest way to geolocate anything that's why it's always best to work with an original image in case you are dependent on what you are doing okay let's take out the image we are going to geolocate it sorry for it yeah this one wait a minute it shows here it is okay I'm going to use a Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's image metadata viewer. I'm gonna choose the file by cycle. Okay. Surely I'm not a robot. View image data. Let's wait for a minute to see what's the data we can find in metadata. Okay, it has been arrived. Yeah, see here the photographer used a camera called Canon PowerShot 880 product the lens size was 23.4 mm the flags the date when he, it was captured February 11 2006 and the location of the place and so on see here it's California United States even the photographer used a tool called uh, Adobe Photoshop Elements from Macintosh version 2.0 see here there are latitude it's north longitude it's west and so on compression is JPG old style and so many information we have but we are going to geolocate it since the location has been found in the except data it's simple to geolocate let's go to maps google maps let's see latitude and longitude okay north and west and search it zoom in let's go into a street view just touch the yellow one and the road and the street okay here is the one okay let's go this side see here let's compare with the image see here let's see the electric lamps like uh, the posts are on the left hand side yeah it's on the left hand side you see a speed limit 55 bow on your right hand side let's see here yeah 
it's on the right hand side there is a mountain backwards but the mountain looks different here so it's not the correct one and the roads are plain here the roads are bended so we need to move to a new direction let's guess we move backwards okay let's change our direction okay I think we got This was the one. See here, the posts on the left, the board is on the right, the roads are bended, and there is a mountain backward. Okay, let's try to see the exact place let's move backwards some little okay I think it's enough okay okay see here compare with the image we have got same mountain this same pose the same yellow sign the same speed limit 45 thus we have geolocated the image the cyclists are here okay then the next one we are going more uh, towards this a image without XF it's somehow difficult but we are going to do it let's see the image is here a friend of mine said that the picture was the picture seems to be in Scotland like uh, yeah let us guess it let's see what are the strings present in the image yeah uh, he I see here the Edinburgh woolen mill Okay, we need here we need to find the place where the photographer would have taken the image like inside this it might be an, a restaurant or it might be a coffee shop or anything let's go into let's google it the okay the Edinburgh woolen mill and he also said that it was on Scotland you just switch to maps Okay, there are many Edinburgh Golden Mills. So just see the frontage of these stores here. No, yeah, let's see the image. Uh, it seems like it's curved on its frontage. Let's see here, it's flat, it's flat, it's flat. Here it's white in color. Seems it's flat. Uh, Think everything is flat let's guess this and see whether there is another images any other images okay the Edinburgh they might have been painted or something let's go to the street view see here I, I think I have got the right thing right one let's see here okay I think this is the correct position yeah let's take the image see here there is a signboard and the staircase seems similar the Edinburgh woolen mill looks similar the windows look similar 
everything seems similar so uh, the photographer might be opposite to the old ml so just move to what's the opposite okay there is a coffee shop there is a coffee shop it's the v coffee shop okay let's look into it there can be any clues yeah uh it seems like the tables look similar see here the tables and the chairs look similar see here the chair the same chair but it's been painted differently it's been painted differently that's the case because paintings change buildings build, but buildings never change the same one i think so let's see another image yeah the same one the same two chairs so this the photographer might be in the v shop and took the image this we have geolocated without xf data okay now the okay. the next part is verifying videos videos makes the people to feel it's like a real incident but there are events where there is a spread of misleading information using videos in social medias and platforms we all know that videos is equal to number of frames of images geolocating videos are not much different from geolocating images a video is just a string of images usually played at 24 frames per second in other words a video will, will hold lot more images that can be analyzed uh, reversed scrutinized by us so for investigating uh, images i am going to use a extension called fake news detector debunk by invidia see here let's click just open embed it's a good extension works better okay before going um, before analyzing video let's do some forensic method of verifying uh, images see here let's take this we have to spot the fake okay we are going to do it by not by reverse imaging and so on we are going to use forensic search by forensic method okay let's do the painting looks similar and everything looks similar let's do a forensic analysis see here we found this let's see the eye wavelet each image carries invisible high frequency noise that is the result of capturing process as well as the compression the discrete wavelet noise algorithm filters the image and calculates the lo local noise distribution at each part of the image regions that differ from the rest of the image are highlighted in strong red and are likely to originate from other images as this algorithm is often misguided by differences by texture and focus it is best interpreted in combination with other algorithms okay okay uh, the red color does not denote the man standing here it denotes uh, painting the same color denotes the painting here let's see here okay in the ghost filter the painting has been highlighted so let's verify it and it also uh, has a provides reverse search engines like just click the extension you have the option to reverse image any like i'm going to use yandex let's do reverse image to check the original image okay this was the duplicate one let's look at the similar images here sorry for it see here the image looks like this but it's been replaced manipulated 
the image has been manipulated okay that's fine let's do another one yeah uh, this pic looks like something strange he's a sick person but holding Quran in his hand okay let's let's investigate it by using forensic analysis okay see here the red region it's been the the Quran the hard part and the same here let's check the ghost one or like it's still not the same okay let's verify it right click extension and the index okay see here it was not Quran it was a uh, iPad okay it was iPad there was this thing was not there see here this thing was not there so this one must be the original one and that was a duplicate okay is there any I think is there any way to investigate videos over forensics let's try mm. okay uh, let's go there Invid is a great tool. It has analysis, three frames, YouTube thumbnails, magnifier, metadata, and so on. Forensic, just analysis. Okay. Here, we are at the final most part. The case study of a real investigation, which I have made recently. Okay. Recently, I found a post made by Soumya Jit. Majumda, a journalist previously with the Times of India and NDTV, so he's a journalist. He posts videos uh, on in uh, incidents like uh, emergency situations, emergency incidents, disasters. Okay. On the way of uh, seeing his post, I figured that this video. <laughs> The context here is the tornado that hit the Bandal Halishahar as seen over Hooghly River. 40 houses partly damaged, some people received minor injuries. This was the context. So he shared, it, uh, uh, shared this clip with this context. So I just copy the video address. Just go to Invert tool, go to keyframes. We are going to split the video into uh, images, frames of images. See here, it is a 20 seconds video with uh, 9 frames. Let's reverse image search it using Yandex. Let's do this. Let's do another one.
got the results see here among this it's a bit hard to figure out the one so I have made it I found this Twitter on that day but it was they deleted later so I went to the archive.is which holds the deleted uh, snapshots see here the same clip the clip was shared on May 25 20, May 25 2021 10.05 10, uh, 10 pm okay in the name of uh, Bandal Halisha Tornado okay but the same clip the same photo was posted tweeted on 6 44 a.m 21st May 2020 it's been a year it's so it's not the same tornado and I also figured out a YouTube video with this see It's August 6, 2016. So, uh, the uploader was Musafir Sujon and he tagged it as a real cyclone scene by Sujon. And uh, seeing his comments, uh, okay, it's a tornado, not a cyclone, or today, yeah, cyclone should have been a circle, okay. Uh, one of the comments he has been said that it was on Bangladesh, okay. Yeah, it was a Bangla. It was on Bangladesh. So, this one was fake, but was shared. Uh, there, there was five to uh, five point five k views, and uh, fifty nine retweets. Fake news spread massive uh, during emergency situations. So, this one, uh, Invid is a great tool to use. They are magnifier. You can magnify any images and so on. So. This is a part of verification and I am done with it. Okay. So verify before forwarding anything. I am going to conclude my session. So thank you.